seven minutes at 160. Um, it's a jury charge, but it is a closing argument, so kind of like a legal opinion kind of thing. So, um, 160 for seven minutes. Ready. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. It's very tempting for me to stand here and argue to you that the defendant, James Smith, is guilty beyond a reasonable doubt of murdering Jack West and Amanda Jones based solely on the confessions that you heard testified to by his daughter and sister. It's hard to imagine a more compelling testimony or a more compelling sort of confession than the one made by your own flesh and blood. When Kara Smith sat here on the stand and told you on October 12th of 2006 at their home on 16th Street in Heron, Illinois, that she saw her father in the back driveway digging for that pry bar, and he told her that he was going to kill them. And she took this stand and told you that she saw him with that shotgun in the trunk of his Cadillac, and she tried to stop him from going. She sat on the stand and told you later on that she came back home. She met her father behind her house on 16th Street, in Heron, Illinois, and she got out of his car and he fell to his knees and he said, I killed them. Ladies and gentlemen, that proves him guilty beyond a reasonable doubt. You heard his own sister tell you that that man, Jim Smith, her brother, came into her home in the midnight hour with her seven-year-old daughter in the home. He comes into her home with that shotgun and asks her for a rag to clean that gun. She tells you she sees it with the yellow shells, and she asked him what he had done. He said, I killed someone, and I opened up that closet door, and I saw Amanda. That evidence was not released to the public, ladies and gentlemen. That confession proves him guilty beyond a reasonable doubt. I would be remiss, ladies and gentlemen, if I did not go through all of the evidence that pointed to his guilt, and frankly, you would be remiss if you did not consider that as well. Now, first, what I would like to deal with is evidence of flight. Innocent people do not drive through the night all the way to Albuquerque, New Mexico on the same day that their estranged wife and the man that she was with were found murdered in his home. Evidence of flight is the action of a guilty man. A guilty man takes off and drives that length. A guilty man checks in at the Crossroads Motel on the same day that his wife's body is discovered. A guilty man signs in under an assumed name. And you will get this exhibit when you go back and deliberate. I ask you to look at it, study it, and see the lengths he went to to disguise himself. The actual length, literally, from Illinois through Missouri, through Arkansas, through Oklahoma, through Texas, to halfway through New Mexico to distance himself from what he had done. Now we know, ladies and gentlemen, when he was arrested there, they seized these Walmart receipts from his car. That, ladies and gentlemen, proves that he could not have left Illinois before 1.30 in the morning on October 13th of 2006. This is what produced the videotape that you saw where he was wearing those tan boots as he walked into Walmart. Also, ladies and gentlemen, since we know from their friends that they last saw Jack and Amanda alive at 10 o'clock, that also, ladies and gentlemen, defeats his attempts at an alibi when he told the New Mexico authorities that he couldn't have done this because he was on his way to New Mexico. An innocent man has no reason to create an alibi, even as lame as that one is. Means, motive, and opportunity. You have heard this before. These are the classic elements of any crime. Means, motive, and opportunity. Now, ladies and gentlemen, the state of the law in Illinois is we don't have to prove motive. We are not obligated to delve into the depths of the criminal mind. However, in this case, the motive and evidence of his motive in committing these murders is on display in abundance. The first thing you need to look at is the crime scene. Ladies and gentlemen, the crime scene will tell you virtually everything you need to know about this case except the name of the murderer. That is Jack's West home. That's the outside of it. You notice the grass, the concrete, the killer, ladies and gentlemen, the defendant, James 
Smith forced in that door, whether it was pried, whether it was kicked, whether it was shouldered in, it was forced in. The killer forced in the door, and he killed Jack in his own front room. There you see the evidence of the door forced in. There are the pieces from the door jam showing you without a doubt that the door was forced in. Okay, that was actually only five minutes. I didn't go to seven. Okay, happy practicing. Good luck.